I'm Dr. Janine Krauss, and today I'm going to talk about food sensitivities. So food sensitivities have gotten a little bit of a bad rap. It sounds like, oh, they're trendy to say I'm gluten-free, I'm dairy-free, I'm soy-free. But guess what? They're a reality. Food sensitivities do happen. And I commonly will find that folks might not even know that it's a food sensitivity. They might think, I have this migraine, and this migraine comes every couple weeks around my period. But then we find out that, let's face it, ladies like certain foods before their period. Sometimes it's chocolate. Sometimes it's that craving for those potato chips, something salty. Well, certain foods have certain reactions depending on the individual. And it all depends on what your digestive system lining is looking like. If it's irritated, which is pretty much most of the U.S., and the irritated digestive system lining is called the leaky gut, intestinal permeability if you want the fancy term. What it means is those cells that are supposed to be nice and tight stuck together, they're separated apart. They're allowing food molecules to get across into the bloodstream. Food molecules that normally wouldn't be in the bloodstream. When they get in the bloodstream, the body's like, what the heck is that? It treats it like a foreign invader. Just like your immune system would see a virus, a bacteria. It's going to go after it just like Pac-Man, gobble it up, and create an antibody to it. So then what happens? The next time you eat that food, you have a little bit more of a reaction. And the third, the fourth, the fifth, all of those subsequent times, those reactions start to compound. What I see commonly on food allergy testing is that folks react to the foods that they most commonly eat if their digestive system is damaged, if they have intestinal, intestinal permeability. Try to say that one fast three times. But nevertheless, if they have this going on, then now we have a lot of other factors that could be happening. Yes, gas and bloating in the area. A histamine response. Has anyone out there ever eaten a whole bunch of tomatoes because it was nice and ripe in August in the summer, and all of a sudden you have this rash all over you? Yeah, that's histamine. Same thing with shellfish can cause that, anchovies, all kinds of things can cause a histamine reaction. But it's something that is a red light, a warning light saying, uh-oh, something's going wrong with my digestive system. Food sensitivities are so common. And they're also common because we have a lot of genetically modified foods that get into our digestive system, some unknowingly, some knowingly. We eat it, say just regular old potatoes, non-organic, GMO potatoes, they get in, same thing like corn, they get in, go down, we break them down, they get to that digestive system lining, and sometimes they keep irritating that lining. Why? Because maybe the food's not moving because we don't have enough digestive enzymes. So the food sits, and then those cells get irritated, they separate apart, and that little molecule gets across, goes into the bloodstream. What happens when it gets in the bloodstream? Immune system attack. Because our vessels narrow in our joints, a lot of times we'll tend to have issues with joint aches and pains when we have food sensitivities. It's because your body is exerting its immune system attack on these food molecules that have managed to reach your joints, elbows, areas in the fingers. And so what a big reaction that one might have is that you might eat gluten and you might even have corn all in the same day. And then the next day you feel hungover and you're going, I didn't drink any alcohol. I didn't have too much sugar. What's going on? Or you might feel brain fog. You might feel fatigued day in, day out. That could be due to a food sensitivity. So can acne, so can lackluster skin. All of these components are warning lights that quite possibly you have a food sensitivity. Now, are food sensitivities permanent? No. If you treat your digestive system lining, you heal up that gut with things like bone broth, collagen, things of that nature, aloe, licorice, that can all help to heal up those cells so they're nice and stuck together and not allowing things through into the bloodstream. So what's one to do? Well, first you want to look for warning signs. See if there's a certain food that you eat and you can pin down that, boy, I just don't feel good after that. And it can be up to 72 hours after that food. So what I recommend everyone working on their pathway to figuring out their owner's manual is to do a food journal for at least a couple months. I know it sounds tedious, but we have things like Fitness Pal, all kinds of apps out there that you can use to be able to track all of your food because what is not tracked can't be managed. So you've got to track those things. You've got to know what's going in and how you're feeling. And so making a note of all of those different things is absolutely key. 
That way, you know, warning lights, what foods might be some of those issues. You pull those foods out for a little bit, heal up the gut. Guess what? You'll start to feel better, possibly better skin, less aches and pains, less fatigue, and you might even notice some weight coming off. Now, if you want to fast track that, you can do food allergy testing. There's great companies out there that test the IgE, that is the immediate response, and the IgG, which is the delayed response of the food allergy testing. And I will definitely put up some of those resources on my website so that you can see those testing companies and what options that you have out there. And so I'm Dr. Janine Krauss. I've gone through food sensitivities today with you. And if you have questions, feel free to hit me up on the web. I'd love to talk about food sensitivities even more. It's a huge thing to pay attention to. Get on that food journal and start making your notes now. Thanks for watching.